Hi, so my name is Jenna and I'm here at BookCon 2016 in Chicago with the wonderful Morgan Matson. Hi! And Morgan Matson is the author of a bunch of really popular contemporary books. She writes about summer all the time. Um, her new book, The Unexpected Everything, actually just came out uh, two weeks ago? May 3rd. May 3rd, really recently. Hard to keep track of time these days. Um, but it's super cool and we're here to just talk and have some fun at BookCon. I'm excited. So, my first question, it's a little bit obvious. Why are you so obsessed with summer? <laughs> <laughs> I love writing about the summer. Um, I I like that there's an end point. Like, mm -hmm. I like that you know there's a beginning. Usually 4th of July is kind of the middle. And you know there's an end. And I always enjoy, uh, like, a bit of a ticking clock. Yeah. Like, you know that summer's ending. Like, you know September's around the corner. And whatever might be happening might change. And so I love that sort of feeling of... Like, even when you're in the summer, you're really enjoying it, but you know yeah. that, like, fall's coming. And yeah. so I think that's, like, a cool... I also think three months is a nice um, setting, like, a nice time frame for a novel. Like, yes. I think it works out. Um, and I also feel like I always had a lot of freedom during the summers, and I feel like summers sort of give you the freedom to be someone you're not during the school year when you're more yeah. locked in mm -hmm. to, like, activities or your school group or your school identity. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there was always that moment in fall when someone would come back from the summer and you'd be like they look totally different or they just seem totally different like right. they've had these adventures that you don't know anything about yeah and so I feel like that can happen in the summer in a way that it can't when you're sort of in your like day-to-day -day school mm -hmm. life and so I love yeah. that exploring that feeling yeah so the unexpected everything is about a girl who obviously lives through the summer and she walks dogs and she has lots of fun so was there anything in particular that like really inspired you to write this story or um it was a couple different things I was um in Virginia like two years ago and um, I was just starting to think I, about politics and about because uh, uh, the main character's father is a congressman and so I was really kind of thinking about what it would be like to grow up in the shadow of DC and I think it was because I was so close to DC that I got this idea um, and sort of what that would do to your relationships and your friendships and, and how that would shape you and then I was like okay if that's this person who's kind of learned to never be vulnerable and to always be aware of what she says and mm -hmm. how she's presenting herself who would be the best sort of love interest for her? Who would be the opposite yes. of that? And that's kind of where Clark came from. And the job took me a while. Like, I was sort of, I wanted her to have a job. She's on a path. She wants to be a doctor. She has an internship all lined up, and then it all falls apart. Um, so I wanted her to get a job that would be the last job she expected she would ever have, like, not prestigious, not resume building, yes. like, the opposite <laughs> of what she's been going for her whole life. And it took me a while to find the right job. And then one day I was literally walking my dog, Murphy, and was like, Oh, oh, obviously. Um, this. Perfect, yeah. yeah. So, one of my favorite things about the book is Clark and um, <laughs> his job as a novelist. Uh -huh. um, I was thinking this the whole time I was reading it. Will we ever see that book? I was just talking about this with my editor last night. Mm -hmm. I feel, I don't think I will ever pull a full-on Rainbow Rowell yeah. and do like a, like a, although you never know. Yeah, I'm sure anything, she was saying that yeah, like probably. when Fangirl came out. But, I mean, I think what I would like to do... And like this is like not planned or right, anything. Of course, like, this is just for the yeah. moment. <laughs> I think what I'd like to do is like maybe for my next book, like have it as like a pre-order thing or like a fun extra oh, yeah. of like fifty pages of like Clark's yeah. most recent book. That would and be like so maybe cool. not even the beginning fifty pages. Like maybe like, just we like drop you into the middle. Yeah. Like you get like a big chunk of it. Yeah. And I like, feel like that would be fun. Because like thinking about writing that whole book, like it, would be it was very large. It was really fun to like do little segments uh -huh. of it. So they, I like have to figure out like more of the. I mean, I know a little bit of the world, mm -hmm. but like, have you written a lot of fantasy? Or I've is... never written fantasy. This so was this like was my new. first like attempt at trying to do this. Was it fun or was it just? It like... was so fun. Oh, that's Although great. It's a real. I mean, it's like I feel like even in my fantasy, it's like very yeah. contemporary. <laughs> yeah, contemporary fantasy. Like you, don't... you could you could be the person to start the new subject. Yeah, contemporary, contemporary fantasy. fantasy. It's like very realistic <laughs> fantasy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so fun to like dip into a world mm -hmm. and have like, you know, stuff around the edges. Um, and it was super fun to kind of like, you get little peaks. Yeah. Um, but you didn't have to commit to the whole book. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> and I feel like that would have been so daunting. So this yeah. was my way of kind of like sidling up to fantasy. Right. Being, like I'm going to like dip my toe yeah, in there. And maybe yeah. come back later. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, this is a really random question, but I found when I was reading, I was really intrigued by the names that you chose uh -huh. for all your characters. Did you, like, pick all of those because you, like, know people like that, or you just, like, came up with them on your own? I'm mainly thinking Toby Hanna, because oh, that's such a unique name. Yes, so that's, like, one of my favorite names of all time ever. The thing that I do is I'm basically, like, saving my future children from being named these things, because, yeah. like, I use all my favorite names, basically, on my book characters. Like, 
Bronwyn and Palmer and Toby Hanna and Amy and like all these names and Lucian and yeah. all these names that I love so much but I have a feeling might not be appreciated. Might be, yeah. Um, so uh, there, I uh, the book Second Chance Summer is set in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania and that's yeah. where I spent summers growing up mm-hmm. and there's a town like a few towns over um, called Toby Hanna it's like the Toby Hanna Township. Yeah. Um, and so I always loved that so much like yeah. so so much and so I was like that's like my favorite name I love that name yeah. and so I know I needed to give it to a character and, and now that character and now is born yeah, and exactly. it's wonderful but I spent a lot of time thinking about like the names and friends names and mm-hmm. like all like names are super important to me I spend a yeah. really long time with them and um, the character of Brie her name's Sabrina yeah. um, so her two sisters are named Sonia and Sneha oh, which are yeah. my two friends who are named Sonia oh, and Sneha cool. um, so like they I just got a text from from Sonia she was reading it she was like oh my gosh and I was I'm like in it. exactly exactly <laughs> so she liked that that's so fun um, so I think one of the reasons why I really like your books and a lot of people really like your books is because you sneak in little like treasure hunty eggs from your other books. Uh-huh. Is that something that you like planned on doing when you started out or you just it just happened that you stick people in there? I mean, I think I always loved it when authors did that. Mm-hmm. Like, when you could sort of be reading a book and be like, wait a minute. I just read this Wait book. a minute. Like, Deb Coletti does that a little bit. Sarah yes. Dessen does it mm-hmm. really well. Um, and so when I started writing Second Chance Summer and I realized there was going to be a town in common, I was like, oh, we could just, like, see Amy and Roger in this coffee shop. And, yeah. that, and like, so many people loved that mm-hmm. that I was like, oh, okay. So we did it more in Since You've Been Gone and we did it yeah. more. We did it. There's, like, a lot, I feel like. In this, this one, one, yeah. And someone found out, and like, I think it blew her mind a little bit, um, that there's a Easter egg for Unexpected Everything in Since You've Been Gone. Yeah, I think I heard that. Yeah. And I, like, haven't gone to check it out, yeah. but I'm really excited to look so for it. So it's, like, it's one of those things that it, I ended up sort of retconning it, where uh-huh. it was, like, um, there's a fantasy book series mentioned in Since You've Been Gone. Yeah. That, like, Doug at yeah. the Shoe Rental is always. actually yeah. told me about that. And so I was like, oh, that could be Clark's fantasy series. And it looks like I have this grand plan. Right, yeah. And I'm just, like, taking advantage just of coincidence. Thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yes. So now kind of on to writing. Okay. So when you write your books, you always have phenomenal playlists in your books. Oh, thank you. And I'm always curious, like, what kind of music do you write to? Do you write to that playlist or do you have, like, separate music for writing? I do. I sort of, um, I go back and forth. For a while there, I was having to write in silence. Like, I I used to be Mm -hmm. so into my playlist and then for a while I was like, oh, this is getting too distracting. Yeah. Now I'm getting back into the playlist. Mm -hmm. Um, It really is a mix of, like, songs that feel like the book to me or feel like the characters but also then just like the songs I want to listen to right, right. now mm-hmm. and I can't listen to anything that's too new yeah. um like because then I'll like be like grooving along right. and like and having too much fun exactly. of it has to be sort of like a, a well-worn song yes that, um like not quite become background noise but mm-hmm. like it's just there and what's what's funny is like for the last few books when I'm getting to the end of a book I make like an end of the book playlist oh yeah that only usually has like eight or seven songs on yeah. it and I'll just loop that and loop that and loop, loop that as I like drive towards the end yeah yeah cool so um this is another random question but how many songs are on your iTunes since you make playlists often I do you use like Spotify no I don't use Spotify um I think I only have like 10,000 songs in my iTunes library only 10,000 um I, I don't know if that's a lot or not that's just what I have, I have about um, 7,000 and okay. everybody thinks that's a lot okay. so okay so you you probably are on the higher end. But, like, I have, like, it used to be, like, in my car, I had, like, a dock for my um, iPod, mm-hmm. and that just broke. So I've had to be burning CDs, yeah. which I haven't done in such a long time, and then I started burning them and giving them away to people on tour, mm-hmm. and I'm, like, so into it again. Yeah, it's, like, it's so 1998 again in it's my like car. It's, like, my favorite thing to And do. I like it because I feel like, sort of like we were talking about, like, with books in the summer, like, you only have like 80 minutes right and it's like you have 20 songs and mm-hmm. it's like you can't the order is really important and I feel like I was missing a little bit of that when I was doing right. my iPad playlist yeah, so I'm like really kinda, back into the CD mixes yeah I love CD mixes um so kind of going along with that how do you make your CD mixes like how do you decide like this song should go on it this song not really or is it more just like what you feel I feel like it's one of those things the order is always super important to me like if I'm making a playlist like it needs to flow and I feel like mm-hmm. Playlists need to have an arc kind of like a book does. It's sort of like, are we starting out really big and then going down and then going really big Mm -hmm. again at the end? Or like, is it sort of like building and building and building and then like you've got some like great songs and then it's like going down to like slower stuff? Like, I feel like every, every good playlist has like a path. You know, you've like heard the bad playlist that it's just like, 
random yeah, stuff and there's like, no uh, there's yeah. no structure there's no structure like I feel like is. and it's it's you almost don't know until you're going through and sometimes I'll just listen to a few seconds of each one I'll be like next next yeah. next next seeing mm-hmm. if it feels right right yeah yeah that's so cool <laughs> I love I that mean, you understand I love oh, that you're like oh yeah I actually totally. like literally do the same oh my thing God, all I love the time. it it's so awesome it's so much fun but kind of going along with music so you're into Hamilton. Oh my god. I, ha- I have to talk about Hamilton oh my with like god. all the authors that I interview. So is this going to go on for 25 minutes now? Because like mean, that's, like we I can mean, just do this the whole time. we could just do the whole thing. Yeah. But, um, so Amy obviously really likes musicals and yes. stuff. I think she would be pretty into Hamilton. I really honestly wish I could retcon that because like now her musical theater playlist feel very dated to me. Yes. It's like she would need Hamilton because also Roger would love Hamilton. Oh, he would love Like Hamilton it would be his so like much. best he would thing ever. So hard. Like Book of Mormon needs to be on there. Yes. Like there's a lot of musicals like that have come along since since Amy Roger mm-hmm. came out, and I feel sad that they're not on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in my heart, I know that she would be listening to it. She though. would totally. So, be into you know, it. do you that. think? What do you think her favorite song would be? I think maybe "Wait for It." Yeah, yeah. I think she would love because, like, for it. I do. I feel like it's sort of, and I feel like that's a little bit of her kind of philosophy. Not personally, but she spends, I think, a lot of the book kind of like getting ready to do something. Yes, absolutely. Um, do you have a favorite Hamilton song? Or does it, is it, it changes. Like, circulates I mean, I feel all like the time? It, it circulates all the time. Like, I had a week where all I did was listen to the King George songs. Yes. Just, like, the three of them. Just, just like, on a loop, all loop, the time. loop, loop, Um, uh, non-stop was, like, mm-hmm. going, like, for a while, that was, like, all I was doing. Oh, um, non-stop. Non-stop. Non-stop, non-stop. Non-stop, non-stop. Non-stop, non-stop. Um, and Wait For It is just spectacular. I love the room where it happens. Like, mm-hmm. it just, um... I just love that show so much. And then there's some that I was like, I was working on my new book Mm -hmm. and I was in the library and um, there were, I still have only listened to the last song once. Like if you look at the plays of my Hamilton thing, I can't do it. It's too hard. And like I got, I was like very, since I'd seen the musical first and then I heard the soundtrack, I was very aware of what I didn't want to hear. Yes. So I was like working on my book and I got to It's Quiet Up Town and I was just like, this is going to happen. And so I was like weeping at the library. (laughs) Now I can listen to that, but it's like, yeah. It's hard. It's hard. We've been there. It's hard. Everybody's been there. So I guess one last question. You said you're working on a new book. Do you have like a timeline for that or any information or just new? I'm working on it now. Um, It's supposed to be coming out next summer, which is fast for me. That's really fast. I usually never have, um, I usually do every other year. Yes. But this all could change. Like, um, I'm still finishing the first draft. So, you know, this could, uh, at any moment, everything could change. change. Um, So, yeah, so right now it's looking like summer 17 uh, for the new book. Exciting. And uh, it's exciting. I'm really excited about it. Um, We don't have a title yet. We have a beautiful cover. We don't have a title yet. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Is so. it going to be like set kind of in the same world like all your other ones? Set in the same town, but not in the summer. All right. I know. So Morgan is moving away from summer for her next book. We'll but it is see. just spring break. So it's like, I'm still like. <laughs> so you're like easing into it. Yeah, so we'll exactly. do fall break and exactly, winter break. Exactly. And then there we're we still not in school. Of course. Basically. Of yeah. Course. You can't have a book about school. <laughs> Apparently not. No. Apparently not. So thank you so much this for talking This was so great. Thank me. you so much. So this was so fun. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.